today, the 10th of October, is World Mental Health Day. And according to the Dutch government, for about half of you, that's a topic that you struggle with. Think about issues of anxiety, depression, loneliness, study stress, sleeping issues. And to talk about that today, we'll be discussing with Ruth Beetom, who is the chair of the GGZ, which is the organization that represents all of the mental health care providers within the Netherlands. In her career, she was also the chair of the CDA, the Dutch Christian Democratic Party, and a preacher at the Dutch Protestant Church. She's a woman who can give us a very multifaceted opinion on the current state of mental health in Amsterdam, at our university, and in the Netherlands, and maybe even beyond. Let's have a warm welcome for Ruth Beethoven. Hello, everyone. Hi, Kun. Hi, Max. Thanks for coming. So. Hi there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for being here today. Yes, of course. Um, uh, first, what does World Mental Health Day mean to you? Um, I think people are diverse in many ways. And that's also for their mental uh, state of being. Um, and... Well, we in our society often think that people should fit in one size. That's not true. There is mental diversity. And I think we should cope with that and see it as a, something uh, good and positive instead of only problematic. So let's discuss about that. Well, of course, that's the answer that we would expect from you being in your current position. But do you think we would have asked you the question 10 years ago as a politician, 20 years ago as a preacher, you would have answered differently? Um, well, as, as, a, as a pastor, I, uh, which I have been for 10 years, I was often confronted with people with, mo with mental problems, um, uh, uh, burnouts and so on, but also very severe, severe mental problems. Uh, uh, bipolarity and so on, uh, schizophrenic people, and um, well, that that was for always a love I had in mind, uh, seeing what it does with people to have serious mental problems. Anyone has trouble in life, that's a fact of life, and it needs resilience to cope with that, but some people have serious mental diseases. And that causes sometimes loneliness and lack of perspective, troubles with your family, trouble with your friends. And we should take that very seriously. And I think we need the professionals we have uh, uh, very badly to cope with that. So that makes that at one side, the society must be much more open for um, people having mental problems. Um, uh, the stigma is something uh, that uh, should be uh, gone forever, but at the other side, for people with serious mental problems, there must always be good mental health care, and that's not always the case. Uh, you've had a lot of different positions during your career. Yeah. What was the biggest mindset change that you had throughout those different positions in your career? Yeah, well, uh, um, I realized that I didn't answer your former question completely because afterwards I was, of course, uh, a, a party chair for eight years and uh, saw in The Hague many politicians and ministers uh, dealing with exhaustion, with uh, also burnouts with uh, mental problems themselves. And, uh, well, that was for me something that made very clear it can happen to anyone. And it doesn't mean that you can function anymore, that you, uh, you, mu you, must you must take it seriously, you must deal with it. And uh, uh, at what, in the respect of that we, um, uh, to, to make policy, uh, I think, and that my conviction has become more uh, strong, stronger since I am the chair of the Nederlandse GGZ, that uh, there must be more money to cope with the problems because so many people have them. Yeah. Um, I think all of us, or at least most of us, know something about the basics of the Dutch uh, healthcare system. Yeah. But what does the Nederlandse GGZ, so the representative body, actually do? Well, it's it's a um, uh, it, it's a cooperation of the um, of several um, 
uh, organizations for mental care, for example, in Amsterdam here, Arkin is one of the members, Jelinek is uh, one of the members, uh, and uh, in the rest of the country, for example, Parnassia in The Hague and Rotterdam, that are very big organizations, uh, there are, and 100 of them work together in the cooperation in the Nederlandse GGZ. And for our members, we, um, um, we do several things. Of course, there's uh, the dealing with the Ministry of Healthcare for, uh, for the money and good legislature and good laws, and that's a struggle on its own. And on the other side, uh, uh, we try to um, give people a realistic view on mental health care but also on uh, the importance of your mental condition. And uh, that has to be, for, for me as a chair, uh, there's a, a task to, uh, wherever I am, to fight the stigma and to, um, uh, to underline how important it is that anyone should take for granted that you can have mental problems, as I just said, and uh, it takes some resilience, but on the other hand, Talk about it. Take it seriously. Talk with your friends. Talk with your family. To, uh, talk with uh, people on your work because you need it. Well, I think maybe we can turn to the audience for a bit now. So maybe with a show of hands, we can just see how many of you here have struggled with your mental health. To say, it's quite a lot. And to to follow up on that, who here has particularly struggled with the Dutch mental health system? So whether it be waiting lists or getting to a GP or getting a reference. Well, so it's less than the average in society. Wow, that's, that's at least it's less. But what's, what's your first response to that? Yeah, well, that's my first response, I think. Mm -hmm. Half of the students experience um, um, mental problems. Uh, it's higher than the Dutch population. I said one in three has a mental uh, disease. One in three. Uh, not all the uh, people uh, uh, have health care or want health care, but that they have uh, in one way or another uh, uh, um, uh, a mental, um, uh, not really a disease, but uh, mental problems, that's a fact of life. And for me myself, for instance, um, uh, when I had the interview for being uh, uh, the chair of the Dutch GGZ, I told to the committee that I have uh, uh, um, ADD, that's a, that's a concentration um, um, uh, uh, disease, and I have medicines for that, and uh, I have struggled with that in my life. I myself studied uh, here in Amsterdam, and it took me 14 years to uh, finish my studies. It, I see it's not really possible anymore nowadays, uh, 14 years, but for me, I wanted, I, I'm successful in so much respects in life. I, I, uh, I have nice friends, I have a good family, uh, I'm very lucky, but I can't concentrate. What, what's, what's the matter? And um, years, years, years later, um, my children were diagnosed with uh, ADD, and well, the, it's a genetic thing, yeah? So I wondered, well, there was 14 years. Was it something with me, myself? I recognized how the uh, psychiatrist uh, talked about that. And I recognized uh, the problems that kid, my children had um, uh, in uh, the way I had problems in my study time. And um, uh, well, uh, the, the diagnosis was in fact a relief. Oh, well, uh, there's an explanation for this. And for my children, it was very interesting as well, because they saw me yeah, and, and said to me, well, mom, uh, it turned out well. Uh, you, had, you had a career, hadn't you? Yes, I had, and uh, I'm, not, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. But I think I have to talk about it to be an example, to show, um, well, uh, anybody's different, people can have a disease, and even uh, then, uh, you can be successful, um, a good friend, a nice mother, and uh, uh, much more. And a good politician, I think, but well, that's a different uh, story. Um, in 2017, 17% uh, of the Dutch population faced some sort of uh, mental health issues. 12 years later, that was 26%. Among young people, 
uh, rose from 22% to 36%. Why do you think that it rose so much faster among young people? Uh, the different explanations, I think. Uh, there's more attention. Um, I just talked about my own diagnosis. Uh, well, it wasn't known when I was uh, studying. Um, and later on, it, uh, um, there was, uh, um, we knew m m much more about it and how to deal with it. That's one. But on the other side, uh, there is, um, society is more complicated. It, it really is. And people have to deal with uh, existential security, uh, with performance pressure, with uh, society, societal uh, individ individualization, uh, with increasing income disparities. And I think that all has impact on mental problems. And also the social media, we all have our phone, uh, which is a, a, a big pleasure in many respects, but all those sounds and videos and distraction the whole day, 30, uh, 350 messages an hour, our brain isn't fit for that. Um, I think, well, we, it develops, but that, um, uh, that, 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 has, that it has impact is a thing, I think. And also, uh, the pictures we get from all those happy people, successful in life, uh, um, nobody tells you that that's not the real thing, that although that, that people have also deal, have to deal with problems and with um, uh, imperfections. Uh, but, uh, for example, uh, my daughter is, is 18 now, and she, I, I, she, I, I, she tells me, Mom, I'm not dead. I, I, I'm, I, cannot, um, that this, I cannot reach that standard that is set. Um, we have, a, we have an, 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 a society in which 10-year-old girls have an app on uh, how to perfect your body, to, um, to change your face to uh, make your eyes bigger, to uh, change your forms. And is that normal huh? when you're 10, that you're so fixed on how I, uh, uh, how do people think about me? And, uh, uh, can I be in the standards others set for me? That's very, I think that's one of the reasons that we have more pressure and more problems than before. No, we, we looked at your social media presence, and you don't use Instagram, for example, at no. all. Is that, no. a, is that a choice that you make no. for your mental health? Uh, no, it, it's being always on the move. And I try to do uh, X, and I try to do... Uh, it's old-fashioned, I know. And I try to do um, um, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, but to do all the different kind of social med media is almost Im uh, impossible. I see um, someone of my organization looking at me. Uh, I always promise, but, but I will start with, uh, <laughs> with Instagram or something. But it's lack of time, really. Yeah. And then it's more important, I think, to, for example, to talk to you. Um, uh, uh, just to hear from you as well what you see and what you experience. Does later on we have time, I think, to, uh, yeah. to exchange thoughts? Yeah, and so. uh, I look forward to that. Yeah, of course, uh, our generation is one that has been through a lot of social media. And uh, in a few, few weeks ago, the EU introduced a law that allowed users to make it mandatory to allow you to turn off personalized algorithms. And, and again, so you the, the, the EU law? has this new law that makes it mandatory for apps to allow users to turn off the personalized algorithm. Okay. So you, you yeah. just see yeah. what's being posted historically, but not necessarily on what the app thinks is good for you. Do you think that's a step in the right direction? Uh, it comes from something different. Huh? And that's my experience as a chair of a political party. The impact of threats, uh, for example, um, and um, uh, uh, what's pesten? Yeah, bullying. Bullying and so on. The impact is enormously, and it's it's one of the causes of, of mental problems as well. And from that respect, I can understand it, because if you say something about someone else, don't be anonymous. Um, don't be a coward. Say it in the face, I think, and then you can deal with it. Uh, of course, um, we see a lot of politicians leaving 
the field now because of the threats you talk about. Do you ever have to deal with that with your time in politics? Um, yes, um, because as a party chair, you know uh, a lot about not only par parliamentarians or ministers, but also about people in local governments or provincial governments. And uh, there does um, not only bullying, but also threatening is, uh, it's not from last year, it, it was from last years. It has become much more, uh, it, it become worse. But I think, uh, I see that um, people hesitate to be on this, to be a candidate for parliament, for example, but also in the local government. Uh, and I think that's, um, that's very bad. No one should be threatened because of his opinions. The opinion should be debated. Um, opinion should be uh, challenged uh, in, uh, in Parliament or wherever be, but not in threats. Um, I tell this because it's a known fact, but a few months ago I had an appointment at Ferdinand Grapperhaus, who is uh, the minister, form, former Minister of uh, Justice. He hasn't been a minister now for one and a half years. But we had dinner, and he said, well, I, I, I'll bring some friends. Said, okay, friends are always welcome. But the friends were six uh, guards being with him every day. Uh, he can't go spontaneously to his children, uh, can't go spontaneously to the movie, or and, so on, and so on, because he's threatened by um, uh, the Dutch Mafia. And, well, that's, that's, that's the Netherlands. We thought this was perhaps something of Colombia or uh, perhaps the States, but in the Netherlands, here people are cycling on a minister. We think, but that's a view. Mark Rutte is on his bike, but it's not the way he, that he his usual um, way of transport anymore because it can be. And we heard yesterday that uh, Tim Hofman was threatened. Uh, uh, at uh, uh, the NPO, um, and it's also something in the media, uh, and we shouldn't allow that democracy is something to stand for, and we should also stand for that anyone should have access to the public public's office. So, um, well, everyone is needed. Yes, I think. Talking about the Mafia, the statistics that we have on this topic came from a study uh, that was done uh, that was titled Monitor Mental Health and Substance Abuse Students Higher Education. And that makes the connection between mental health and drugs yeah. uh, and makes it seem like they're connected. And do you think that they inevitably go hand in hand? Um, we see that um, uh, stress factors in the mental health system that Drugs is one of them. Uh, besides academic stress, behind cost of living, uh, they have much impact on mental health. But um, drugs, drugs uh, sound um, relatively innocent, and uh, but don't underestimate the effect because uh, regularly using cannabis um, and, uh, for example. Also, um, cocaine has impact on psychosis, um, depression. Um, your mind is not made for that, and regular use has definitely negative impact. So, um, the only thing I can say, be careful, uh, because... Uh, also, new drugs, uh, 3-MMC, uh, crystal meth, is a serious uh, relation with psychosis, psychosis and depression as well. Uh, alcohol hasn't, but it negatively affects the brain. If you use much alcohol, then the effect is growing. For youngsters under... 23, I think, but especially under 18, it's even dangerous. Um, the uh, people we call coma zuipers, I don't know if the internationals know this uh, term. Yeah? Um, how do you translate it? 
Just uh, heavy, heavy drinkers. Heavy, no, young, young uh, teenagers, heavy drinkers come in the hospital, they're completely out, and then the next day they know nothing anymore, but they have had a serious attack from the alcohol, and their brain, uh, the IQ, is lower than it was before. So, uh, well, when it happens one time, um, you can manage, but uh, be careful. That's the only thing I think. I like, I like drinking a glass of wine. I like drinking b beer. Um, uh, I, tr I experience with cannabis as well, but don't let um, drugs take your life or rule, or rule your life. That's uh, it costs too much. Yeah. So obviously, drugs have very negative effects, but we also see a lot of talks about the possible therapeutic use of drugs in clinical yeah. settings. Recently, there was an article published finding positive results for MDMA and psilocybin in treating uh, treatment resisting, resisting depression yeah. and PTSD. What is your, do you see a potential for these types of treatments in the future of mental health care? Well, that, then it's the medicine, eh? that's something different. Um, uh, for example, when you uh, use uh, medicines for ADD uh, uh, and you don't have this disease, then it will it cause you trouble. Not in one time, but regular use will. Um, and uh, you shouldn't take medicines in your normal life when you don't need them. Uh, and the same is for drugs. But they can help in, uh, in uh, certain situations and um, Please uh, um, don't experimentate too much on your own uh, and inform your doctor. Yeah. Of course, um, that's also a political issue. And yeah. of course, we have upcoming elections. And if you look at certain election programs, they very specifically mention that, um, for example, GroenLinks PvdA is stating that we should be open to exploring the use of, for example, LSD and MDMA and psychedelics in mental health care. Well, your own party said, yeah, it doesn't. Do you think that's the right choice? To well, I'm here as the chair of the uh, Dutch uh, uh, GGZ. So, um, uh, for us, we, um, uh, we have an, an, a special program called um, um, uh, Addiction and um, uh, a, a, good, uh, um, a Good Lifestyle. Um, and uh, we say, uh, be aware of what you're doing. And any addiction, um, um, well, um, uh, my grandmother always said everything with two is, uh, uh, um, uh, it's, it's not good. So be aware of what you're doing and um, uh, don't let it rule your life because there's more than um, being drunk or being stoned or what and on. It, well, it's, that's the only thing I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, you're in a room full of students yep. in Amsterdam. I, I, have, I have three myself. My student, my children uh, are 21, nine, no, 22, 20, and 18. And um, uh, um, um, uh, well, um, uh, what, how do you say, op kamers? In a dorm, in a room, what? student, student housing. Housing, yes. Uh, well, uh, um, and uh, in this case, mom is uh, on uh, uh, is else uh, mm -hmm. uh, and having rooms, but uh, yeah. uh, the children living live in our house at home, and uh, uh, have a real student life. And we live in an area with all student houses. Next to us is Vindicat, so this is the corporal. Uh, yeah. On the other side is Albertus. That's uh, well, I think uh, exactly the students know that. Student yeah. Association. And in our Street, uh, we have, I think, 16 houses and 12 are them are student houses. So, especially in the pandemic time, it was um, when uh, everyone being at home, it was uh, fun every night. Sometimes we thought, oh gosh, we had to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> How we have to deal with it. I have a good connection with my neighbors, uh, the Vindicat uh, house, we have a garden. Uh, it's completely with all the uh, prejudices. Uh, there's uh, um, um, uh, how do you call it? Um, the, the Albert Heijn uh, cards. Albert Heijn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, what, what do you do when you walk grocery, in the house? Grocery, grocery cart. Yeah. Grocery car, yeah, yeah, okay. That's in the in the garden and uh, uh, and a bar and uh, many other things. Once a year they clean it up for the new generation uh, students that's coming. 
and then I go uh, uh, to give them uh, um, uh, uh, beer because I think uh, our uh, um, our view has improved uh, um, uh, importantly. So we'll have a good relation. And when they have uh, an, an, uh, a party in the night, we have an app uh, and apping. So from when the noise is uh, much too loud and think, well, after one o'clock, it's called bonkende buren. This is a, um, uh, well, the uh. um, uh, neighbors with noise, you could say. And then we app and, well, we have a good uh, relationship and then it's over. Yeah. Mm. Does we see how much, how much they drink? There's, and it's much more than in my student time, and we drank <laughs> good in our student time, I can say. And I see someone I knew for my student time, and uh, uh, um, we, had, we, we had a good time then. The students now drink much more than then. And the drugs are normalized as well, because uh, cocaine was in our time something that was rarely used, and now it's completely normal. Yeah. Um. There's also a rise in uh, self-diagnosing and sometimes, by even in the, by extension, self-medicating, um, particularly amongst the younger generation. What's your opinion on people who find their own, own diagnosis? Um, I don't think that all mental problems are diseases. Um, when you have debts uh, or you trouble with your housing, or uh, can't find work or something like that, that causes negative thoughts and depressions. Um, uh, the first thing you should do is talk about it with your peers, with your family, with anyone, with, with someone at the university. Uh, there are spe special programs and you're not alone. That's one thing. But when uh, the, the numbers are really impressive because uh, half of the students deal with mental issues um, uh, and a quarter of the students have occasionally or frequently um, wish to die yeah, or go to sleep and, and never wake up. They're, they're su su suicidal and that, that's very serious. Um, and I think when that is, well, when it keeps on coming, please go to your doctor and please ask for help because then uh, it's not sure anymore that it's not a mental disease and when you have a mental disease you need professional help yeah. and oh, sorry. it can be that 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 the doctor says uh, well uh, because of the other problems you have uh, uh, that must be solved and even then there is help with uh, uh, problems with your income the debts or um, uh, the problem with your housing. And we in, in the GGZ, in the mental health care, we uh, try to cooperate with, uh, uh, for example, here the, the, the city of Amsterdam or with um, uh, the, the, the housing companies and so on to find solutions. Because we know that mental problems are not always, um, that, that's not all the mental care that is answered. But some people don't know anywhere else to go than the doctor. That's the only doorbell they know where to ring because they need help. And even then the doctor can say, you need different help and we help you. On the other hand, self-diagnosing could also be a result of the lack of the accessibility to the mental health care system. The waiting uh, list and so currently yeah. there are 80, yeah. 83,000 people on the waiting list with an average wait time of 14 weeks. Uh, to take an extreme example, in the region Mid Brabant, mm -hmm. the waiting time is uh, 65 weeks. Yeah. Um, how did we get to this point? And that's a very serious uh, thing. We looked at the numbers and we think there are 60,000. That's enormous as well, because some people are double on the list. And uh, uh, we try to be to give an, an honest insight, and um, uh, we don't think that if you have serious mental problems, it can wait so long. And especially for a, a serious um, uh, um, uh, mental problems, the waiting list is much too long. So that's what we try to do in the way I uh, told. Um, 
um, with a quick diagnosis that people who need different help can get different help. For example, the debt, uh, uh, the debt problems. Uh, on the other side, um, um, we try to um, give help in a digital way uh, because that's quicker. Um, and there are many apps with uh, uh, our, uh, our, our organizations have developed apps uh, how to deal with mental problems. I just was in Eindhoven um, with uh, GGZ Eindhoven and they developed apps uh, where you can do it like on, on demand and their most um, um, uh, popular apps are loneliness and um, <laughs> worrying, <laughs> dealing with worries. Uh, that's something that should be normal. It's it's a fact of life. Uh, extreme loneliness is n is of course different, but um, loneliness is something that ha occurs in every life. I see now that your generation of students is more lon lonely than the generations before. One side it's because of the the social media. You you do everything by phone. And on the other side, there was, of course, the pandemic with deepened the problems. But the problems were already there before. Uh, we visited Spain and we thought perhaps it's a Dutch situation. No, also in Spain, there was the signals that uh, uh, the younger generation is more lonely and had serious mental problems uh, before. And that has to deal with, I think, the causes I named before. This loneliness... Um, I saw on my own children, my eldest, eldest son started uh, uh, his study in the year that the pandemic occurred. And he, stuck, uh, he was more in contact with his friends of school than with new students. And that's something that stayed because in our time, Granny tells, after college we went for a coffee or drink something. Or, uh, and nowadays um, people go more... Um, efficiently to college and um, uh, afterwards uh, they um, well they go their own way again uh, during the pandemic it was everything was online and um, for my older son he asked uh, were all black uh, screens shall we uh, um, uh, uh, open our screen so that they can look at each other nobody wants to do what is it I don't know and I think you need your friends I, uh, you need uh, people to talk about your things, uh, personal things, but also things with college and so on. What is it that uh, 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 this generation, uh, um, uh, well, is not so, well, um, interested in uh, uh, ordinary coffees? Yeah. <coughs> or is there something wrong? Am I wrong about that? Well, I think, I think is, is it something you recognize? Oh, you always do nice things after college? <laughs> I think it's a hard question to answer. But one advice that, for example, the State Secretary, Maarten van Ooyen, gave yeah. uh, was that specifically Secretary for our Secretary of State generation. of Mental Care. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, is that there is also a problem with our generation that we tend to uh, find counseling too fast and that there's just simply not enough supply yeah. for all the help that our generation needs so that he gave the piece of advice that parents, for example, should be more reluctant on sending their children to a psychologist simply because we don't have space in the system. Do you think that that's then the right response to that? Um, as I said, a serious problems should be taken seriously. But not all problems are medical problems. And not all the problems can be solved by the doctor. Um, and... Um, th 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 there must be a middle way somewhere. Um, mm. And I can say it in general. But um, Queen Maxima was last week on the UN Limited Festival of Dutch Universities. And uh, she had a very impressive speech there. She, she's involved with mental care because her sister had very serious mental problems and commu committed suicide a few years ago. So she is the ambassador for Mind Us, a uh, patient organization. And she is always has makes room to talk about this kind of things. And she said, um, 
Um, as students always feel on. Students have no time for reflection. There's no room for failure. There's no room for exper uh, experimentation. Now, that kind of things should be done. And I think that's something that Martin van Ooyen meant as well. Um, perhaps we should try a listening ear, attention, um, and, and on the other side, uh, investments in um, uh, to, to reduce performance pressure, to reduce insecurity in life, uh, and also the environment problems are troubling students very seriously. Um, our common future, how to deal with that, um, and yeah, that that's something that needs attention to and doesn't need mental health care. Mm -hmm. does need mental care and a listening ear. Yeah. So I think um, a few weeks ago only there was a study that showed that among Dutch teenagers, one in five are yeah. worrying about the yeah. climate. Yeah. How do you then reach these teenagers that are still struggling with this and that are still having these issues but aren't necessarily able to get their help through the traditional channels that we always have? So you talk about apps, for example. But is there a better way to show that there is a need for mental care but not necessarily the mental health care system? Now, the first thing we have to do is, uh, that's also for, a, uh, uh, it's also a political question, is to invest in this future, oh, take care. <laughs> um, to take this problem series, uh, seriously. And um, that gives trust, that's, but that's one thing. But that the climate problems are very serious, we can deny. Um, that it makes you um, uh, negative about the future uh, is understandable. And even that, I think that talk about it and take it seriously is the first step. And sometimes it develops to uh, something more serious and then it needs uh, mental care. Uh, and I think first is the step is... Uh, Psychologic care, uh, psychiatric care is special for mental diseases, and this is mostly not a mental disease. Um, we already talked about COVID a little bit before, yeah. but during COVID, as was already mentioned, uh, the waiting list for young people increased disproportionately. Yeah. Uh, in the moment, they have not gone down. Um, yeah. To what extent do you think that uh, the current waitlist problem is a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Yeah, and it stayed afterwards. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's something, it was there before. COVID has deepened it and widened it perhaps, but the problem already was there. And uh, I told something about the causes. Uh, I uh, told something about possible solutions. Uh, uh, but it's something it, that, that's really troubling, of course. Um, and uh, it's also a fact that the light care, which is the care for people with um, problems uh, for not sleeping or um, um, uh, a burnout, um, it, the problems aren't light, but in um, comparison with mental diseases, it's, uh, that, that's, a, that's a different league, of course. And we see that many attention goes to the light care, while the people with mental diseases don't get the help they need. And we are dealing with that problem. We, are, we don't have enough people working in mental health care. Uh, there is a lack of, uh, of, uh, of psychologists, a lack of psychiatrists and uh, a lack of uh, nurses, and um, that complicates the, uh, the dealing with the waiting lists. Do you yeah. think that one reason why people are so much quicker to sp talk about light care rather than severe care is because of a more stigma on severe mental problems compared to lighter ones? Um, that can be. And I already said uh, fighting the stigma is very important. Here in Amsterdam is a very important uh, project. It's called Thrive. Does anyone can try can, uh, knows Thrive? Yeah, has experience with Thrive. Yeah, are you positive about it? Yeah, 
it, it's it's more, more attention for the local government for uh, mental problems with youth. And uh, it's a broader program than mental care uh, on its own. And it's working together with schools, uh, with universities, with uh, all uh, with the cultural sector and so on. And I think that's import an important in initiative that should be followed uh, in other uh, cities. Yeah, please. So we've talked about solutions and there's yeah. a lot of solutions that are being proposed, but you still see that also since COVID, the problem has stayed the same. The first report that was published about the waiting list issue has been since 2018, around that year, but there's still not a significant decline. So why do you think this is such so hard of a problem to make a, to make a nudge in? I'm an optimistic person, um, and the only way is up. And the fact that problems are so big are not a reason to say, um, um, let's turn our back to it. Every step helps. And um, uh, for me, well, we have uh, problems with uh, the not having enough doctors or psychologists or psychiatrists and so on. We have also the problem of uh, lacking money. Uh, uh, and we have also the problem of very complicated system with different uh, laws and different ways of finance. And sometimes that doesn't help. For example, when you are, have mental problems or mental disease under 18, you are helped with uh, uh, money that comes from the local government. And then you become 18. And then it's not a question of the, uh, the place you live, the city or uh, uh, where you live, but that the money comes from the uh, insurances. And these two systems don't help because when you have in the one system and you have to go to the other, there must be a new indication, uh, um, uh, a, a new um, a waiting list and so on. And um, it's very, very frustra frustrating that because of that kind of of reasons, people don't get the care they really need and deserve. So that's for me, that's one of my uh, tasks as well, besides um, addressing uh, the stigma, addressing uh, uh, the more money and more uh, people working in the mental health care issue, also makes it more, make it more easy uh, in the system. And the other thing is, that we have in the Netherlands uh, a healthcare system that's based on, um, on the market. Uh, 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 it was the idea that uh, having uh, being concurrent that, that can help to improve the, the care, that you get better care when people can choose. But in fact, people can't choose. People are on a waiting list. People are waiting to get the, uh, uh, not only the best help, but just help. And then this system doesn't don't work at all. Uh, uh, it's not a, a, a question of being a, a better institute than the other. It's being an institute that can help, and that we have to deal as well. I'm very curious to the political to the elections, uh, the results of the elections, and the uh, the, the government uh, agreement uh, uh, after that because I hope that problems like this will be faced and that we make steps that in which we can cooperate without uh, being uh, chased by the ACM or something like that. I think uh, we'll talk about money and the economics uh, more in a bit, but I think maybe now is a good time to turn to the audience, see if there's any questions from the audience. Just raise your hand. I see someone in the back there. I'll, I'll hold it. Do you hold it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just had a question. Like we've been talking about um, the impact on students when it comes to mental health, and that yeah, students have it a bit difficult. My question is, what do you think is the role of the university when it comes to like the mental health issues that these students are facing? And do you think that university uh, university should also have some sort of responsibility to these problems? Um, yes, and I don't know how it is in the UVA here. But uh, all, all universities have, of course, uh, psychologists and have people you can go to if you have problems, also mental problems, um, and uh, use it. That's the first thing I should say. On the other hand, uh, I hope that uh, the studies uh, themselves will uh, um, uh, look in their own 
program if it's realistic uh, what is asked from, uh, from students. Uh, in uh, the pandemic time, I saw an impressive uh, uh, quick change in how to use digital, digital um, uh, ways of uh, 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 college and so on. Um, but um, it, does, it, it, it changes more than just how to get your information. It changes also the contact with the university. And you can be very anonymous as a student. Uh, if, uh, if you don't take the first step, nobody will look, uh, look uh, or, or ask where, where were you or something like that. And you know, I, I'm, I'm curious how it, that is dealt here in the UVA. My uh, sister is uh, teaching here uh, journalism. Uh, and uh, I know she is, um, uh, she is a, um, a teacher for her students who talks to them, uh, also ask where, where are you and so on, and that helps. And that makes that people won't fall out, out so quickly. Depends on the, uh, on the, the, the professors and uh, other teachers as well how to deal with that. And I hope that um, the mental diversity I started with, that that's also on the mind uh, uh, from people who educate here. But, uh, well, perhaps there are there others here? Yeah, would you want to give an answer? Yeah? Jan Linsen? That's the person I know from my study yeah, time. I'm, yeah, I'm a member of the executive board, so uh, the, the thing is, of course, that we have uh, student counselors and we have student psychologists, but we're only allowed to offer uh, psychological help that is related to study problems. So, of course, you can apply for it, but if you are ch dealing with really difficult uh, psychological problems, we have to refer you to the, to the GGZ uh, uh, system, because even if we would like to, uh, we, we can't, it's, we're not allowed to, to offer these kinds of, of services. But of course we have our student uh, doctors, uh, so, and they are really versed in this kind of uh, things as well. So we're now experimenting of, of, on adding a little bit of psychological help to the student uh, uh, doctors so that we can go a little further than we go now. But yeah, we, we can only go so far. So this is the system that we're working in. And then we have to refer people to the uh, GGZ system. And well, of course, there are waiting lists, et cetera, et cetera. So you know all about it. And that's what that uh, told us. So this, this is the way we try to, to help. In the COVID time, of course, we had some extra programs to reach out to, to students because, well, we, we saw uh, from, the, from, from the beginning that this could lead to, uh, to, to mental problems. Uh, what would really help, I think, is that the boundaries between the certain worlds are uh, uh, lowered. Because um, when uh, the student psychologists know that they can call to the, uh, to the GGZ, to, the, uh, the, the, to, to ask questions to counsel for counseling, and that, um, uh, th that would help to prevent, uh, to prevent mental problems or to make it not worse than, than, it, uh, than it looks at first sight. So um, we are working on that because we can't do it all for free, of course. There must be time, there must be money given to the psychologists that, can be, that are counseling. But to, um, um, to, to uh, erase those boundaries with universities and schools, but also with work, that would help. Yeah, I think. We have time after uh, the interview to talk more about mental health in the university. So maybe look towards the future. You talked about more money. Uh, so what you see is that as of now, one sixth of yeah. the Dutch population works in healthcare. Um, and there's already a lot of money going to Dutch healthcare, yeah. which is the biggest government expense. So to what extent do you think that more money is possible, more investments? Um, yes, and that's that. That can be that. It can be this like this. It can't become, no, it can't stay like it is now. <laughs> um, um, because when w the developments go like this, one of four works in 2030, w f works in the mental uh, sector. Uh, we don't have the people. We do, and we need the money also for other things, uh, for example, good education. Uh, but um, the mental health care, um, the budget in the mental health care, uh, um, 
uh, extended since 2009 with 11%, while the people who uh, need mental help have developed to uh, ha uh, with 53%. And that is an inequality we can't deal with. And we see that somatic health is and mental health are related. When you have a mental disease, then you get also somatic complaints and vice versa. And we see also that um, uh, and, and, and that means that preventing in mental care will have effects on uh, somatic care as well. Um, and it would be a good investment to um, to take it serious, to take this mental health seriously, also to prevent from other things. On the um, SEH, uh, um, when you go to the hospital, it, it's um, uh, the emergency, emergency room. Yeah. yeah, ER, of course. Yeah, most people who come there come there because of mental problems. It's unbelievable, but true. The director here of the OVG. Uh, he told me a number of 60%. I don't know if, if it's true, because it seems rather high. But if it is true, and you can prevent this, uh, these are also the people with addiction uh, problems, but if you can help with that, you will prevent on other, uh, uh, um, uh, other um, uh, levels of, ma of, of care in total. So I think Pennywise pound foolish. Good case. It's a good thing. Yeah. No. Um, and some more more questions. Uh, no, uh, we're, we're, we're not doing any more audience. No, questions. no more we'll questions. Do it after, oh. after, yes. Um, it's so a pity. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we've heard a lot about uh, many problems in the mental health care sector, yeah. but there are also a lot of promising developments, like in what? In what? In the mental health care sector. In, uh, but also many problems in. Also no, there, there are also a lot of um, new developments happening. New developments. So yeah. things like AI yeah. or yeah. digitalization. Yeah. What is the development that you are most excited for that will change the way we deal with mental health? Um, on the beginning, the apps, because uh, anyone has a phone. And so it, it lowers the, the, um, uh, well, the complication to get mental care if you have direct ac ac uh, access to those apps. And it can only be for people with serious mental problems. It's used in, uh, uh, in the GGZ, in the mental health care. Um, and on the other side, it's a very tricky issue, but EI can help as well, because it makes signals when your problems are so serious that um, uh, direct help is needed. Um, but there are, of course, the privacy problems, and I understand we must uh, uh, develop a system when, where this personal data can be related to bigger um, information. Uh, and that's really a thing. But I think, well, um, uh, I was in Eindhoven, I told you. I spoke there with the board of uh, uh, GGZ Eindhoven and they long for a system in which they can use these data because it helps um, to develop real good care for people who need that. And, well, that, that should be the principle um, for everything. Yeah. Very promising. Future yeah. of healthcare. I think maybe to close it off, you have had a lot of different careers in your life. You've had a lot of different experiences. And if you would give some career advice if you would have to choose for the rest of your life, either preacher, politician, or what you're doing now at the GGZ, what would you choose? <laughs> I think I'm a living example that you can do very different things with your skills uh, and with your talents. Uh, in the meantime, I was an, uh, uh, an, an uh, editor as well from a newspaper uh, um, in between that had to do with... Uh, how important media is for democratics and uh, rule of law. Um, and uh, I was in the north, in the Netherlands, where I live. Uh, so that was quite another thing. Uh, but all these kinds of things refer that um, 
uh, that you can do things uh, uh, with, your, um, with your talents, with your focus, with your experience. And um, uh, when I was uh, in my 14-year study career, career and uh, one day I uh, definitely des uh, decided that I would stop and I went to uh, at Uitzendbureau, heet dat? The recruitment agency. Okay, now to the recruitment agency. I said, well, here I am, I'm uh, leaving my studies, uh, what, can I, uh, what can I do? I did it, isn't it? Uh, this is my uh, curriculum. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the lady on the other side typed it in, looked um, uh, at me and said the historic words, you're fit for nothing. <laughs> and it caused with me uh, the reaction, well, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back and I uh, to home and I said, "Well, I will show them." Uh, and uh, uh, and I think that that I have ADD, ADD that are creative persons, there are that are flexible flexible persons, and uh, yes, you need a good agenda, and better a secretary who tells you where to uh, where where to be at what time with what. Uh, my phone is uh, uh, have been uh, lost um, many times. Uh, that causes some uh, um, uh, despair with uh, with the org organization. But yes, I can do the things for the GGZ because my experience, because I am flexible, because I know from the background. And yes, my children are right. I think it has turned out well finally. Well, I think that's so a, a self good uh, self self esteem. Don't give up, trust in yourself, use who, who you are, and get a life. I think that's a good piece of advice to close off today's interview. Just after the interview, you also had a request to the audience. Yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh, to hear your questions. We couldn't be here in the public, but perhaps uh, in private. And uh, when you need anything else, don't hesitate. I think you can find me on the internet. I can, uh, and uh, I, perhaps I can uh, help you with... Uh, some issues you have, de to have to deal with or give the advice where to go. Right. So. so thank you for being here with us today. Thank you to the audience, of course, for being here with us today. Tomorrow we'll have Donald Pols here, who's the director of Milieu Defensie. He'll be here from one to two, exactly on the screens next to the side of us. So we hope to see you here again. Till then, we hope you uh, wish you a rest happy of your World Mental Health Day and a final round of applause for our guest today.